Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next chapter of our module Modeling and Simulation. In this chapter I will show you um, a dynamic urban model. So this will be the basis for our later more complicated, more complex urban simulation models and as um, the title says now we add dynamics again so it's a system dynamics model for urban modeling or urban aspects and this means we again use the aspect of time in our model therefore let's open the definition um, 04 um, the simple dynamic urban model and you need for it the plugins Anemone the human um, for the interface or for the visualization of these rectangles and not necessarily the meter hopper for some kind of um, especially for showing which plugins you need anyway the general uh, layout of the definition on the left hand side in this purple box you see the visualization um, definitions or the, the components for visualization which creates basically these three squares and they are feeded by the outputs of our model so we don't need to consider them in detail you can look at it but I will concentrate more on the um, core elements of the definition of our model um, as usual we have on the left hand side the control parameters for the model here i also added um, brief descriptions of each um, parameter that you have a better understanding for what it is meant for and now you see here again our loop components the anemone loop for including the um, discrete time steps in our loop and the green group that's really the core of our model where we even spend some time I will explain you um, a few aspects and in the end I want to motivate you really to explore the code in the components because here we find C sharp components again and especially to understand the mathematical formulas behind it and for later um, if you play around with it on your own you can add additional components additional aspects of the dynamic model for example you see I have included here three rectangles the city size the um, industry or workplaces areas that we need and the area for food production for agriculture we don't have energy for example that's something you could add in the end okay but now let's look into the model first we can start it that you see what happens if i double click the loop start and um, we have the outcome of our model so the outcome is not a spatial outcome it's just um, numbers in my case it's the population size and if you hover the mouse over the population outcome you see for example the last number is 3709 this is the population size in my city for this population i need 3388 workplaces based on my model and the food stock so this is not the food that is consumed that's the food that is left in a kind of a storage is 976 units this is shown in this diagram so what you see as well is it starts um, with these curves um, similar as the wolf and sheep model where you, you see there are obviously some interdependencies between the sizes of these stocks but after a while they stabilize they don't move up and down anymore so um, here we have reached a kind of a equilibrium a stable outcome of our model that has found some um, relationship between the parameters that creates this stable outcome 
and if we don't change anything this will stay forever at these values respectively as long as our model runs okay now the core elements are the increase and decrease of our stocks so um, now we put together really everything you have learned so far in this module the idea of our um, exponential growth function and the logistic growth function you will find it in the model because we used now the sizes of our rectangles means the areas that we have uh, that are available for the growth of the population and for the industry and the food this can be controlled by the sliders and this is the the resources that we give to our model so we will find a logistic function later that is restricted by the available areas for these land uses and then we have the decline functions um, that models uh, similar to the sheep and wolves model how certain stocks are declining for now let's look into our population component this is a very simple um, logistic growth model you can compare it to our first examples here the stock is our population we added just a weighting function for the density and in general it's limited also by the area which you find here okay so this is a very simple expression that you can understand you can also play around with it you can change it to see the effects then for the industry growth we have more or less a similar logistic growth function again the stocks is the jobs and it's um, limited by the population that is available because um, we cannot create more jobs than we have people in our city respectively it's in our model we assume that it doesn't make sense and the food um, that we grow is um, um, de or depends on the inverse of the population multiplied by a certain growth value means how much we can produce how much food we can produce in every iteration and this growth comes um, if we look into this parameter this comes from the agricultural size that's our growth factor okay this is the relatively simple part so there are logistic growth functions for each of these aspects now um, we have the more complicated aspects the decline functions uh, I will demonstrate you a few of the ideas in uh, with the example of the population dynamics of the population decline function so you, here you see again the exponential decline function so we have the stock of the population with this line of code in line 85 that's the, the key formula the key expression the population is declined by the population itself multiplied by the factor for jobs and food the idea behind this it is that we will uh, more people will leave the city if there are not enough jobs or if there is not enough food and to compute these factors i added here the um, corresponding formula and um, i will explain you briefly some aspects of these formulas so just take the, the example of the food factor and you see here we have uh, um, the math power that's an, an exponential function so you have the the, the part that's in this um, round brackets this is um, set to the power of two this is a c-sharp mathematical function you should be aware, um, familiar with it from the programming exercises already and to understand what the formula means i recommend you to look into um, for example a, a function plotter uh, the foo plot for there are many in the, uh, on the internet available 
where you can add this function in the function window. So it's a function y depending um, of x. And here you see I've basically copied my function, the basic function that you find here, to this function window. I've just replaced the food population relationship by the variable x to get this plot. So what you see here, what um, my intention was that um, the higher the result from this function is, the smaller the output of the function becomes. And the output is um, subtracted from one. So it can be between one and zero, depending on the food population relationship. And the food population relationship is just the food stock divided by the population. This is a relationship between the um, available food and the number of population. And if the population becomes bigger and bigger and the food decreases, then um, I will have a high value in my function. Oops. Uh, the function that I created here means a high input value for example, let's say the factor is three, creates a very small output value of my function. This is the part that I have here, means I subtract something very small from one and my food factor will be close to one. Yeah. This is used for my formula that defines the decrease of the population. So if I have a lot, uh, a big number of population and not enough food, this factor will be big, maybe one, means I reduce a lot of people in this time step from the existing stock. That's the basic logic. So we compute some relationships that we do the same for jobs to population. If we have too many people and not enough jobs, um, so if the, this was the food factor, then we have the job factor as well. Um, it's the same idea then with the food. Um, if we don't have enough jobs, we reduce the people in our city because they will just leave. Um, so the two uh, aspects, the two factors, jobs and food, they control the decrease, the decline of our population as we see it here. That's the basic idea of my decline functions. I'm sure you need to spend some time to understand the relationship between this formula um, as we can see it here, the input as we have it from the x, so that's the x-axis, that's the value, the variable in my formula, and the y um, value that's returned by the function, that's what we use here in our mathematical expression. So here you see I've also added here the uh, one, x, one link to, um, to a math, math plotter. And here that's um, the formula that you've seen that I've used here in the plotter. You just need to copy and paste this one. That's exactly the same as this one that I have here. Okay, so it should be clear um, how this basic idea works. The same is implemented for jobs. We have a job factor that's computed by the area divided by jobs, means if we don't have enough area for new jobs, we cannot create new jobs. Therefore, we decline uh, the number of jobs available. And once again, with the food, we do something very similar. Um, that's a simpler. Uh, expression. If um, it's more like a linear relationship, many people eat a lot of food and less people eat less food. So that you just reduce, you assume you have uh, one person eating one unit of food and then you just reduce it from the stock of food. Okay, that's the basic model. And here you see the links between the inputs and outputs of my model. So the jobs are feeded, so the, the created jobs are then feeded to the decline function. And also the population is used for computing the increase of 
jobs and the increase of food but it is also used for the decrease of food the decrease of jobs and of course for the next step of the population size itself this is a really complex model because there are relationships that um, are not linear and you need a while to understand the outcome of the model because if you change a few aspects in the control parameters you may change the whole um, dynamic of the output um, curves for example what can we do we can change the job efficiency let's decrease it and run the model again and we will find probably a different result uh, it stabilizes at similar values but we have um, the red curve is I think the population 3700 and we have now more jobs so we don't have enough people for the jobs because they become um, here more efficient and if we change it to the other side and maybe have also a dense different density rate you can run the model again and see what happens and please also add new components in your own explorations and you can also play around with the mathematical formulas because that's really the, the key driver of the dynamics of my model how you implement these formulas you can use also completely different formulas just um, use the formula plotter to understand what your mathematical function is doing and extend the model that's also um, the basic idea of the assignment please start from this model the urban dynamics model and manipulate it add certain aspects you can also play around with the input values the input um, factors the sizes and how they are related to the growth or decline um, functions of the model but that's the task um, for this module that you have to submit your own model that is adapted based on this um, sample here good luck with the exploration of your first dynamic urban model this is really very important because in our next module we will look into the urban models that are more spatially explicit means they have a, a clear spatial representation they look very realistic because here we have a very abstract city with three squares in the next module we will have a real city and we will use the example of Weimar and therefore you need to understand these dynamics that we implemented here so please be sure that you get 